In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the retrospective template within not just Confluence, but more specifically, Confluence whiteboards. Confluence whiteboards, if you don't know, is an exciting new way to visualize and utilize Confluence. And today we're gonna to show you how to effectively use whiteboards along with the pre-configured template that is provided by Atlassian to take your retrospectives to the next level. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. And don't forget to check out the links down below as you will find links to my merch store, my paid courses, and most importantly, links to the sponsors that help make these videos possible. Let's jump into Confluence Whiteboards. Don't wanna sleep in, cause I got something to prove. I gotta take what I hate and finally make a move. This video is sponsored by Release Team. All right, so within the Confluence whiteboards, you are going to want to essentially look for the retrospective templates. Now there are a couple, and we're going to be looking at the simple retrospective, but just so that you are aware, there's a simple retrospective that we're gonna use. There's the four L's retro, and as you scroll around here, you will see that there's a sailboat retro. There is a couple of others here. So let's pick simple retrospective and let's get started with that. So just click on this use template button and Confluence is going to do the rest for us. So now that we are here, we are going to be presented with the retrospective template that again is created all by Atlassian and we're just going to investigate. I'm gonna show you, walk you through what is being displayed to you so that you can see what is available to you so you know all the different features and functionalities. And then we're gonna go through like a little bit of a mock retrospective just so you can kind of see what this looks like at the end. So let's start here at the top left corner. We're gonna go over through some helpful tips. And so first they have some keyboard shortcuts moving around here inside of a whiteboard. If you've never used it, it's probably best that you learn the shortcuts. So all you need to do is click on the ellipses over here by the share button. And then there will be a keyboard shortcuts here. You can click on that and you're gonna be able to see how you can zoom in, zoom out, pan around, because you wanna be able to just move around as quickly and as efficiently as possible. But if you just wanna move around, you're gonna hold the right click and move your cursor around. This is gonna pan it. You can zoom in, up and down. You can hold your control key and you can do the scroll wheel to go in and out. So again, check out those shortcuts as you're gonna to wanna to be able to smoothly move around this whole thing. Now there is a right click menu, all you gotta do is right click here and you're gonna be able to see that you're able to do whatever's available depending on where you're at. I just clicked on a white spot here, so it just gives me the ability to paste. But if you click somewhere else and you right click, as you can see, you have a couple of different options there. So that menu will be dynamic based on where you're right clicking, based on what's available. You also have some stamps. So we, we have stamps down here that you can click on. This is gonna give you some um, interesting ways to communicate with your teams, a little bit more customized, a little bit more cultural driven, right? So you get a few st different stamps to help articulate your thoughts and ideas. And finally, we have a timer. So in a retrospective, if you are not careful, your team's gonna get carried away and they can just go on forever and ever and ever, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but just know that you are able to click on these three dots here and you will see that you have a timer here. You can click on that, set your time, keep adding minutes or whatnot. Maybe you're gonna take a break, you wanna set a timer, so all these are available for you. So those are the little helpful hints there. Now let's go up to the top where we're gonna actually talk about how to do the retrospective. So hopefully you've seen videos on how to do retrospectives and there is a Confluence template in the regular just uh, through a page view of how to do the retrospective. So how you actually do retrospectives isn't changing. The only thing we're modifying is the view, right? So Confluence whiteboards allows you to be very, very visual. And I really, really like this method better over the traditional Confluence retrospective page because when I used to be in the office and we would do retrospectives, one of my favorite things to do was everybody would get sticky notes and then we would write down our what went well, what didn't go well, what could be improved, right? Whatever template you use for your retrospectives, but we would write it down on a sticky and everybody would kind of have a few moments of silence, you know, just gather your thoughts, really think about it. And then one by one, we would all go up to this whiteboard, this physical whiteboard, and we would put our stickies in the respective columns. And then like our scrum master or, or manager, or somebody of who, some, whoever was running the meeting, they would go up and basically start reading everything. Now, because we live in this distributor world and this hybrid world, this Confluence whiteboard just brings back that nostalgia and really does enable you to kind of have that 
more in-person feeling without necessarily having to be in person, but it gives you that notion of you're writing things down on a sticky, you're putting them on a whiteboard, and then you're gonna read things through. So again, a little bit more informal, but I just love the communication style. And now for a quick word from our sponsor. For nearly 25 years, Release Team has been helping organizations of all sizes to adapt and improve their software development environments. We have experience with a wide range of tools from modern solutions like Jira Service Management to legacy and open source options. Let our experts help you with your next project. Release Team, we are DevOps tool specialists. Make sure you check out the link down in the description down below so you can find how to get a hold of Release Team. But anyway, so this is the template for the simple retrospective. I last and recommend that you run this for 30 to 60 minutes. That's usually how long they go. Uh, it's going to work best for two to six people. Uh, that's usually a typical uh, scrum size team rule. Here's the overview. Facilitate a quick session with your team to reflect on and actions uh, learning. Use this template to get the details quickly. Create a safe place for feedback. Celebrate wins. Identify ways in which people can work better together moving forward and a couple of ground rules that they give you. Uh, this is a safe place, listen with an open mind. Remember that everyone's experience is valid. Share as much as you're comfortable with. Focus on improvement rather than placing blame. I hate that they have to remind you of these things, but retrospectives are probably, depending on the work culture you're in, can be the most uncomfortable meeting you do. Again, it depends on your workplace toxicity or not, or lack of toxicity, right? But some teams do need to be reminded because retrospectives is gonna be an opportunity where Sometimes this meeting can be turned into a complaint department type of meeting, but you don't want that to be the case. You want this to be all about feedback, right? You can't get better if you don't face your demons, right? You have to be able to face those elephants in the room and you have to continuously get better, but you need to do it in a professional, respectful way. So that's what these ground rules are for. And then finally, if you need a little bit more assistance, you can click on this link over here on how to run an agile retrospective meeting with examples. This is all done. It's a run book, playbook, if you will, that Elastium puts together. So that's kind of it, uh, the little ground rules. Now let's take a look at their templates, right? So we have the good, we have the bad could be better, we have ideas, and then we have actions. And so again, if you've ever ran a retrospective, it couldn't be easier, right? All you're going to do is you're going to have your team because everybody can jump in here in real time. You're going to want to share this whiteboard with your entire team. So if they're all remote, they can jump in right? And then you just start with the fun things, right? Everybody should get a different color sticky note if you want. You don't have to, but you can just basically start putting in your sticky notes what went well. We made this video. What could be done better? I could have practiced a little more. Ideas. Ask my friends to jump in on one of these videos. As you can see, it starts to feel a little bit more natural. And then as everybody's collaborating, all these stickers just start populating. And so give your team a few minutes to kind of, you know, pop in their stickies, put them in where they want to put them in. And then you have the ability to then go through each column, capture any actions. And what's really cool, right? If you do capture any actions over here and they need to be Jira tickets, then you can very easily, just from a sticky perspective, you can just put in like, we need to do X, right? And once this exists, you can create a Jira issue from it. So you can basically go to a Jira project and create the issue there. Or if you just wanna be creative, right? Maybe your team like really, really likes this idea. So you can just grab that stamp for the heart, put it on in here and people can just say, yes, I love this, this is the best. Or if somebody's like, no, like, or maybe they're in agreement, right? 100%, this, this is 100% here, right? So you can encourage your teams to use these stickers here to make this idea better, right? To just make communication a little bit more clear, a little bit more fun, a little bit more engaging. And then you can get a lot more value, right? Because it's a little bit less like you bring down the tension, you you just make this as amicable as possible and your team's gonna wanna collaborate in here naturally. So anyways, you just go through the motions there, have everybody put in all their stickies, have everybody use the stickers to help again, augment their reactions, augment their feelings and emotions towards these ideas, what could be done better, what's going really well, any kudos that you wanna give out, right? And most importantly, don't forget to take those actions because when you're doing your retrospectives, one of the things that get forgotten is we just capture the actions, right? We, we know that we wanna make things better and they're captured as an action, but then we forget about them. Well, luckily now, because Confluence Whiteboards connects with Jira software, or Jira work management, right? We can then capture these actions and assign them to an actual individual. They can pull it into their sprints and we can then 
increase the likelihood that these actions are actually going to be actioned upon and actually be done something against them, right? So this is a really, really cool method. And I really, really like doing retrospectives like this. Again, much more visual than your traditional way of doing retrospectives. And so I hope you enjoyed this very quick video on how to take advantage of the fact that these retrospective templates are now built into Confluence whiteboards. And if you were kind of scratching your head trying to figure out, hmm, how can I take advantage? How can my team improve communication with the Confluence whiteboards? Well, I would recommend you start here because this is a really, really visual way, a really cool and interesting way of doing a rather uncomfortable meeting and just, again, trying to add, make it a little bit more fun, more exciting, and increase those collaborations. And now for a quick break to hear from our sponsor. Have a DevOps project in mind? Integrating new technologies, modernizing a legacy system, or just exploring your options? From assessments to licensing, Release Team has you covered. See how we help the state of Colorado migrate and consolidate multiple legacy tools and processes into Jira Service Dev, aligned with the DevSecOps principles of a fast flow, continuous feedback, and high trust. Go to releaseteam.com slash case study to learn more. Release Team is an Atlassian Gold Solution partner for both public and private sectors. Now back to the video. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that like button. And if you made it this far and you haven't subscribed, make sure you take a second here to subscribe to the channel. And most importantly, don't forget to check out the links down below, because if you're wondering, how can I help support this channel? I'm getting so much value out of this channel, but how can I support it? Well, there's links for everything that you can consume and purchase so that you do help support the channel and keep these videos alive. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next one. So fight and fight.